Hi everyone, Ross here from RC Welding. Thank you for coming to my channel and watching this video. I'm going to be uh, fabricating and installing a jib crane in this segment. I'm just putting it up for now. We'll move it over after, just put it up for now. Don't go, don't go lower than that office wall. The jib crane I'm building is going to be with this beam here. It's an I-beam. It's approximately six inches wide uh, tall, sorry, by three and a half inches wide. Now this beam I ended up picking up online for $100 uh, up in a farm area here near my city. Um, the same beam would cost me three, four hundred dollars and right over here I got this trolley um, from my cousin's farm. Still runs good, it's got a little bit of rust but nothing a little bit of a cleanup can't fix and uh, a new yellow paint job. Now, also, the beam is going to be hung right over here somewhere, about nine feet tall. It's got to be able to clear just over this top of my roof there where my washroom is. And it's got to be able to come back over here to pick things up in this area when I'm welding. So we've got a come along set up when the beam is ready to be lifted in the air. Uh, we haven't started yet. I'm just starting to get all the pieces of the puzzle put together and uh, we're going to uh, start building everything. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so this is what we've done. We've cut the beam now to size. Uh, it's just under 11 feet. And I cut, this is basically going to be the hinge of the beam. As you can see, uh, this is 3 eighths of an inch thick. And we've got solid bar that Joe's cutting on the bandsaw. This is like a gearing type of, uh, it's a hardened steel, they use it for gearing and things like that. So we're going to be cutting a piece of this. This is what's going to be fixed on the beam. So we're going to make a platform that it sits on with some bracing underneath. And the shaft is going to sit on top. And then this is going to be welded from here to the beam. And we're going to slide the beam with the shaft, with the uh, hinge on top of the shaft. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just getting everything pieced together. So I've got the uh, tubing, and this is a seamless tubing by the way. I've got the tubing uh, tacked up, squared up on the actual beam. And uh, we're gonna be running a pass here. I'm just getting uh, the grinder ready with the buffing wheel to take all the primer off, make sure it's nice and clean so I get a good clean weld. So we're gonna be welding it all the way around. Now I didn't notch this part out over here uh, because I figured Notching it out is going to give me a hard time trying to notch this out and then I get a cut over here. It may be off square. I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so we've got uh, the one side welded up. I did a little bit of uh, weaving uh, just to make the weld a little bit bigger. Cranked up the machine, of course, uh, just to get some nice penetration there. Uh, now we're going to be putting a weld over here and a weld over here. So I'm going to be turning the beam uh, sideways. Okay, so we've got the other side welded and uh, now I just got to uh, reinforce. So we're gonna be adding uh, some plates. Unfortunately, I gotta cover this pretty big weld. Uh, I gotta put some plates over top of this from the tube down, and we're gonna be doing the weld as well. So now I've got some 3 thick plates, and uh, we set it in here just like this, and I'm gonna be welding this all the way around. We've got the plate welded on. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of porosity in that one corner in there as well. Uh, back door was open, but uh, pretty much it's welded. We're just gonna clean it up and give it a little bit of a fix and then flip it around and weld the plate on the other side. Okay, we have the next plate welded on. So that's pretty much it for welding uh, the jib crane, putting the hinge on it. I'm gonna see if there's any other spots that need a little bit of welding, but that's pretty much it. Uh, you got to make sure that your machine's cranked. You're really getting that good penetration and uh, make sure the welds are all, uh, all nice and solid. Now, before I continue, I just want to say, make sure that you guys check your regulations uh, where you live and make sure that when you build your jib crane, it's up to code. I am a welding shop. I did get drawings online but I'm designing it a little bit my way, modifying it a bit to be a little bit stronger uh, because I can't justify spending over $1,000 to buy uh, hinges for a crane. But you gotta make sure that you're using the right I-beam, 
you got your trolley, your chain fault, you don't want to do anything that's going to uh, compromise the integrity of the beam, and before you know it, it falls on your head and kills someone. So do your research uh, if you are planning on building your own jib crane, and make sure that you meet uh, code or you exceed it. So uh, in this case, I'm exceeding uh, code, and I'm not going to be lifting anything heavy. It's just going to be like my gates, my railings, uh, when I'm by myself and my guys aren't here to help me, or vice versa. They can use the jib crane to lift up what they need to and turn it around. We wouldn't be lifting anything more than 500 pounds, even though this jib crane could probably lift a lot more than that. So uh, just make sure you check your local codes and regulations. Okay, so we have this flange on the end of the i -beam. And I want to reuse everything. So this is what we're doing. There were two flanges. We're only going to use the one. Joe is cleaning the one up. We're going to be mounting this on the beam like this. We're going to put the, uh, the chrome shaft, the gearing shaft, on top of this welded nice and level. And then we're going to slide the jib crane on top. So as you can see, there's still a little bit of meat on the beam. We're going to weld that all. And then we're going to add gussets for more support underneath this, uh, just to hold the weight. But you can see this plate is, I would say it's about 516 just under three eighths thick, uh, but it's more than enough. So we're going to be cleaning one up and we're going to be welding it next on the beam, but way up there. So we're going to get set up for that. How's it coming out, Joe? Clean up a good area? Yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So guys, in the meantime, while Joe's cleaning the plate, I want to explain to you guys as well. Uh, I didn't go out and buy the beam brand new. I believe in salvaging things if I can find them online, uh, making my own tools, making my own things. Because if you want to stay in business, um, you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on building your business. And then if you don't have customers, you, you've spent all this money. In my case, I have customers, I have contractors I've been working for for years. Uh, so for me, it's not that I, I'm you know, trying to be cheap or anything, but if I could build something where I can use a beam that was online like Craigslist or Kijiji, I'm gonna buy that beam. I got that for a hundred bucks, so why wouldn't I, right? Uh, the trolley I got for free. Uh, the chain fall I got practically next to nothing when I bought a lot of things, uh, literally a lot of things off of a guy who was a welder. He included the, uh, the chain fall with it. So, you know, all in all, I'm building this jib crane it's going to cost me less than two, three hundred bucks total. So if you're going to build something, don't go crazy trying to spend thousands of dollars on building it. Try to outsource everything, gather up your parts, do your research, and uh, make sure you're building it right. So I've, so I've gone ahead and uh, I do a center mark. There's the shaft. Joe's cleaning it up. Uh, but basically, that's going to be welded on this. And then the beam is going to sit on top of this. But because this might be a breaking point, I don't want the beam to fall, we're going to be locking it from the top as well, the shaft, to the beam. And uh, then we're going to be kind of like a tie rod setup where we're going to have something from the front of the beam all the way up to the wall. So we've got the shaft welded nice and solid on there. Now this shaft, I don't know if I mentioned it before, I believe this shaft is two and a quarter or two and a half inch um, with that gearing shaft. We've got it welded nice and solid to the plate. Now I'm going to be putting gussets on the bottom and we're going to be mounting it on the beam way up there. So I, I don't know if I'm going to put this on the beam first and then put the gussets. Um, I may do it that way, but uh, we're going to figure that out as we go along. Okay, so you can see we've got it welded up on the beam. See the shaft is sticking out, and then the, uh, the jib crane is going to slide on that, and then we're gonna lock the shaft in at the top with another plate to the wall to really lock it in so it's not going nowhere. So we're up on the ladder. As you can see, the shaft, everything's welded in place. Now we're taking this gusset that we cut from that plate, and we're going to weld that in here like so. We're going to put one here and one on the other side. Okay, so we've got the one gusset welded in. We've got it attached to the front. And we're going to weld the second gusset in. Okay, so we've got the gussets welded on. Both sides. 
and uh, now it's time to, I'm gonna give this a quick sand, grease it up, and then we're gonna slip the crane on top. So we're uh, using a come along right now off the beam of the building, put this straight? and we're lifting this up into place. So there you have it. We have the jib crane up. We're keeping the come along on it until I do the tie rod. Uh, the tie rod's gonna come down from the top all the way down here, just to give it that extra support. And we gotta weld the plate on top of the pin uh, back to the beam, just so the bottom weld doesn't snap. Cody Turco saves the day. Turco and Malti, Mal, Malti? Malti. Malti air. <laughs> Turco and Malti, Malti air conditioning. Malti. I actually turn it this way. So there you have it. Jib crane's installed. We have the come along still holding it. We actually released the come along. The jib crane barely moves. So I'm going to uh, next just put the, uh, like the tie rod end or just something across to support it with another hinge. And we're just going to put some plates there on the beam uh, because the beam, the one that's attached to the ground to the footing, just moves a little bit. It's not that much, but I want to put some plates there just to beef it up. But uh, that's pretty much it. So you can see we put a locking plate on the top so the pin doesn't uh, pivot forward ever and the jib crate stays still. Next thing is the tie rod and uh, I would say that this stuff is almost done, ready for its mechanisms, the trolley and the chain pole. Okay, so we got the last pin and uh, it's been welded on a piece of plate. The plate is about 3 16 thick. Uh, that's going to get welded above and this is going to be for the uh, somewhat tie rod uh, that runs across the top of the beam. It's not really gonna be a tie rod, we're just gonna weld the rod to the actual shaft, that, this is the shaft, sorry, to the actual uh, hinge that turns, and we're just gonna weld it to the front of the beam as well. Okay, so here we go. This slides over top, obviously it's gonna be greased, and then we're gonna have a tie rod welded to this, all the way down to the front of the beam up top there. Okay guys, so we got the uh, last hinge way up there. We put a tube between the two hinges just to reinforce it and weld it some tacks on the tube to the beam. And uh, just ran a solid, uh, I believe it's just over half inch uh, bar, solid bar to the actual shaft up top with the hinge and right down to the front of the beam. Now I'm deciding whether I'm going, I'm debating whether I'm going to put uh, any bracing between that tie rod and that beam or if this is enough. So uh, yeah. I don't know, we'll see in a second. Okay, so we have the moment of truth. The come along is coming down. We oh, welded man. the uh, tie rod in. We greased up the hinges. I just want to make sure I'm going the right way. We put a little support plate there that we're eventually going to cut if you see at the end of the tie rod, just to give it a little bit more rigidity. Is that going down or up? Uh, I can't tell you if it's going down or up, but uh, you can since you're up there. Last chance. We have a winner, man. Take it off. Jib crane didn't even move. Yeah, lower it. Well, I have to keep lowering it. So there's no more yeah, chain fall holding it. holding it. The beam is basically supported under its own strength to the wall. So that's it, folks. That's pretty much it. Now we got to hang the trolley and the uh, the the trolley. Sorry, and the. Uh, Chain fall, hoist, and uh, we're good to go, man. Obviously, I gotta cap the end off, and I'm gonna paint the beam. We'll do that in another uh, another segment, but uh, for now, we've got everything up. Okay, so we've got the trolley on the beam. Fits nice. We have to just take out some washers and uh, make it fit this uh, this particular beam, uh, six inch by three and a half. And uh, now we're just going to cap the end of the beam there so the uh, trolley doesn't fall out. And then we're going to hook up the chain fall. Okay, so we've capped the end so the trolley doesn't fall off. There is our Princess Auto slash Harbor Freight half ton uh, chain fall. Eventually I'm going to switch it over to uh, 
electric, but for now, and the sake of this video, um, we're gonna test it out. We're gonna pick up, uh, there's a heavy horse behind this ladder. We're gonna pick up the horse and see how, uh, how it does. The horse is probably about 100 pounds. So, so there you have it. We're lifting the horse off the ground. Got the chain fall, the trolley. The only thing left is to paint this thing to legitimize it. And uh, we've built a half ton tube train. So guys, I hope you liked my video and uh, I hope you guys learned something from it, or at least I showed you guys how to build the jib crane. Uh, all in all, like I said, the beam was a hundred bucks. Uh, the chain fall uh, hoist wasn't that much. It came in a package deal, a lot of stuff I bought, and the trolley I got for free from my cousin. So if you're planning on build, building a jib crane, do your math. Maybe you could use the hinges the way I did with the shaft and the big solid uh, gearing pin and uh, the tie rod on top. But like I said, this is not in any way a jib crane that I'm planning on lifting anything more than three to 500 pounds tops. Uh, even if it can lift a thousand pounds, I'm not gonna try it because it is a custom made jib. I know I'm sure it could do it, but it would be at the limit. And that's something I don't wanna test. Uh, besides, we don't lift anything that heavy in the shop. It's more for lifting gates, railings, things when we're alone and we need that assistance. So I hope this video was educational. Uh, please don't forget to comment on it and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jib crane is built. Joe, put the horse over there. Nah, I don't like it over there. Put the horse over here. Sure. Yeah. All right. The other thing is make sure that you can take things off the ladder. I just got some pliers off the fucking head. So make sure that you uh, practice safety first and remember where all your tools are before you start moving things around. That sucks.